Let's talk about bits of resolution on your analog input and output modules and how not only can they affect the precision of your scale value, they can also affect your process. I put out some videos on how to scale your analog signals in ladder logic, function block diagram, and structured text. And it's created a lot of great discussion. And one thing that keeps me in an aha moment for a lot of you is you're finding out that either the resolution of your analog signals or the way you have scaled them is affecting your process. So one person said they had a display and it needed to show 50 PSI. If it showed 51, great. If it showed 49, great. Wasn't a big deal. And I said, okay, where is it getting that? signal from? He said, it's our pump pressure. Okay, how is your pump pressure controlled? And he's like, well, a PID. I'm like, all right, what is it reading for its process variable to get you that pump pressure adjustment? And all of a sudden he's like, that same analog signal. So my goal for this video is to explain to you why these two values don't match and how they can be affecting your process. <laughs> This is where we left off in our compute exercise for doing that scaling. And I'll throw a link at the end of this video to all of these. But what we're going to do is we're going to disable local colon 2 colon I dot CH0 data. That way we can manipulate it from inside the program. Let's right click our analog input module and go to properties. And then let's go to the connection tab and inhibit the module. And also for you that are already thinking, all you need to do is throw your low and high engineering units right here. We've already discussed the pitfall of it. And I'll throw that video at the end of this too. But that's going to allow us to manually throw values in here. So now if I right click it and go to monitor, right now our value is 3266. And we're showing roughly 4 milliamp. And if I put 16383 here, now we're going to show 20 milliamp. Now let's write some program to make it slowly go through this. So I'm going to bring down a new rung, and we're going to go to our favorites tab and bring down a go look for a zero, examine off. And we're going to go to our timer and bring down a TON. And I'm going to call this my sample rate, create it, and make the preset. 25. Then for the go look for a zero, let's go find sample rate dot dn. Now let's bring down another new rung and go back to our favorites tab, bring down a go look for a one, and we're going to be looking at that same sample rate dot dn, and then bring down an add instruction, and we can find that on the compute math tab. And in source A, we're going to put local colon two colon i ch1 data source b we're going to put a one and then we're actually going to put that exact same analog value in our destination it's going to let it add up by one each time and we already have a video explaining how the sample rate timer works and we'll throw it at the end of this video also now we need to eventually get this thing back down so now let's go to our compare tab and bring down a greater than instruction and go to our move logical and bring down an mov move instruction and we're going to look at this local colon 2 colon ich0 data for source a and source B is going to be 16,383. And if it's greater than that, then we're going to move a value of 3277, which will bring it back to 4 milliamp. And we're going to put it right back there. Let's go ahead and put these two rungs in so we can understand what's going on here. This is making our analog value just slowly go up. And on our screen, we can also see it slowly going up. Now let's start digging into this and see if we can understand what this 16383 actually means. And we can do that with the Windows calculator. Go to your start menu and just start typing calculator. And this is the way your calculator typically looks. But we can also hit our navigation here and go select a programmer calculator. And when we talk about bits of resolution, we're talking binary. And we're just going to start throwing ones into here until we get 16,383. And that is going to be 14 bits. So this signal right here is a 14-bit resolution between 0 and 20 million. But what if it was an 8-bit? Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, who in the world would buy an 8-bit module? Tim did. 
This looks like the perfect module when you need to read one level and control a pump speed. So we have a 1769 IF4X OF2. This is a compact logics module. But notice right here, it says compact 8-bit low resolution analog IO combination module. What does it mean to be 8-bit? Let's just clear this out and put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ones in. And that means the range of that module was zero to 255. So we're gonna do a conversion to take this 14-bit signal that would be coming off of our module and turn it to an 8-bit. So bring a new rung down and we're gonna go to the compute math tab and bring down a DIV. And source A is going to be local colon 2 colon I CH1 data. Source B is going to be 64. And our destination is going to be local 8 bit. That's just something I'm creating there. So I'm going to create it. And we're going to put that in. Now, why are we dividing by 64? That's going to actually shift six bits of that precision off of that number. And if you're really interested in that, throw it down in the comments and maybe I'll do a video. Now we're going to do our compute again with our 8-bit number. So let's copy our existing compute rung and we're just going to paste it at the end. And my destination is going to be analog scale 2. And that's what I already have set up at the bottom of my screen here. You'll want to create that as a real number. And in place of local colon 2 colon I CH1 data, we're going to put local 8 bit. And then in place of their 3277, that remember was the low value of our analog resolution. That is now going to be 51. Then the range of our analog signal is now going to be 255 minus 51. And we're going to put that in. And on the surface, they look pretty close. But if you notice, this one is climbing fairly consistently. And this one is jumping. Now let's talk about what that can do to your process. Let's right click analog scale, the original one, and let's trend it. And then let's right click the black area and go to chart properties and pins. And we're going to add that second analog scale. So analog scale to add, okay. And this is blowing by a little fast, but not too fast. Let's put this on 10 seconds and click okay. Then hit your run button in the top left again. This blue line is that 14-bit analog signal, but this green one is the 8-bit analog signal. So if we were doing PID control over this, you can see a couple issues. First of all, look how long there is in between you actually seeing a change in value. So if you had your PID update rate too fast, then you could end up easily overshooting, undershooting, overshooting, undershooting. Also, if we want to get an actual error rate down to a certain number, we can't achieve it with this. And you see this on a lot of them, and they keep on trying to fudge it, and it's up, down, up, down. And so you may not need the precision that you think that we're doing with our scaling, but you may need to adjust your process for the resolution that you have. And it's about time we got back into our PID series. So I've created this playlist right here to review our scaling. Show the pitfalls of scaling and engineering units, and then refresh us on our PID.